Mukuro Ikusaba. <gasps> Mukuro Ikusaba. The 16th student, lying hidden somewhere in this school. The one they call the ultimate despair. Watch out for her.
Mikuro Ikusaba, the 16th student lying hidden somewhere in this school, the one they call the ultimate despair. Watch out for her. Yo! You 
know. What the heck? Hmm. Right.
correct. So, um... Just a second. So then... Correct. Hmm. But... Okay. Hey. Naturally. Well... What? You know? <laughs> For serious? Hmm. Yeah! <laughs> hmm. What the heck? It's true. What? Hey. Hmm. Huh? Hmm. No? What 
What's your problem? So then. <laughs> okay. It's all clear now. So, in other words... It can't be. other words. It's all clear now. Hey! No way! Um... Hmm. Well... Wrong. What the heck? So... What? This is very suspicious. Ugh. However, 
what? Hey. Hmm. It's all clear now. What? Just give up. That's fine. It can't be. Because... So, um... Uh, um... However... Huh? Hey! Come on. Goodbye. What the heck? What? <laughs> Stop talking. Come on. to the dining hall. Okay, then. Sweet. Um... You know?
Okay. Correct. So then... Indeed. So... So... However... Correct. Indeed. That's right. Indeed. Mukuro Ikusaba, the 16th student, lying hidden somewhere in this school. The one they call the ultimate despair. Watch out for her. Indeed. In other words... Wrong. Anyway... So... <clears throat> Is that right? Hey! Why is that? In other words... If you spend all your time trying to avoid danger, you'll never move forward. Hey! It's true. <laughs> However... Hey! Indeed. Hey! Indeed. Well... So then... Makoto.
Goodbye. Brought to you by Spike Junsoft Company Limited. have to recommend it to your friends, too! Good morning, everyone! Get ready to greet...
く。Very strange. You know? What's this?
So in other words...
that's fine. So in other words, I under... understand. I... understand. I... understand. I should... understand everything. My goal isn't to get out of here. It's to stay here. Hope. This is all for hope. And that's why I have to stay. I have to stay here. 
My dream just now was so strange. Huh? Did you say? Good morning, everyone! It is now 7 a.m., and nighttime is officially over! Time to rise and shine! Get ready to greet another be-
Hey, Makoto! What? What are you doing? What does it look like? We're dismantling it to see what makes it tick. Dismantling? But I mean, that's Monokuma you're messing with, right? Yeah, that's right. He's not in your face.
So in other words, Clear now. Naturally. What? What the heck? Such ignorance. Let's go. In other words, 
Hey. What? <laughs> I mean... What the heck? Okay. Actually... your time trying to avoid danger, you'll never move forward. Hey. Uh, um... What did you say? Come on.
Hmm. Uh, um. Hmm. Huh? Well. Come on. Come on. What did you say? The 16th student, lying hidden somewhere in the school. The one they call the ultimate despair. Watch out for her.
could it be? So, in other words...
other words. So that's it. It's all clear now. What? 
Yeah. What the heck? Come on. Actually,
Okay. Um. What? What the heck? Kills, chills, kills! Extreme! Can't be. <laughs> yeah of course. A body has been after a certain amount of time, which Stop talking. What the heck? Quiet.
That's right. Hmm. Huh? Stop talking. So in other words, in other words, naturally.
That's right. Hmm. One. clear now. What? Just give up.
Go. possible. Hmm. 
Interesting. What? Ikusaba, the 16th student, lying hidden somewhere in this school. The one they call the ultimate despair. Watch out for her. What? 
such ignorance. It's certainly possible. Hmm. Hmm. What? It's all clear now. Hmm. So in other words, Very strange. Why? Hmm. What? <laughs> Let's go.
what? Time is utterly silent, and yet it constantly assaults us, organisms, the Earth, natural phenomena. It damages us little by little until the end. You should really think about that. Anyway, it's time to begin the class trial. So, please meet up in the usual spot. <laughs> See you later! That's right. Hmm. words. go.
correct. That's right. Whew. So... However... Wrong. In other words... Makoto. It would seem... Goodbye. I can't wait! Thrills, champ! begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Okay, well, I'll leave the rest up to you. Well then, let's discuss the specifics of the victim. First, we need to clarify who exactly the unidentified victim is. It's Kyoko! There's no other explanation! But Kyoko's standing right there. No! That's a ghost! But... she has legs and stuff. Well, that's just because... Seems like the latest evolution in ghost technology! There's a limit to how much ridiculousness I can tolerate. Um, okay. So I just have to prove that the corpse isn't Kyoko, right? Then let's compare Kyoko's traits to the traits of the dead body. Her traits? I got it! I'm talking about her gloves. They'll give us some insight into the mystery. I'm sure of it. In that case, I think it would be helpful if someone explained why she actually wears those gloves. And would you happen to know the answer? In fact, Monokuma told me. Apparently you have scars on your hands you don't want anyone to see. Oh! You know, now that I think about it, the corpse wasn't wearing any gloves, right? They probably just got burnt up in the explosion. I'm not convinced! The ghost is just trying to fool us all! That Kyoko there is just a ghost! Impossible! Okay, then prove it! Oh, she's not a ghost! The dead body wasn't wearing gloves! They got burnt up in the explosion! 
Then she was wearing gloves before the explosion. Well, yeah, she must have been wearing gloves. Because that corpse is absolutely Kyoko. This entire discussion is idiotic. That Kyoko is in pot, okay? Then prove the dead body. They got burnt up. Then she was wearing gloves. Well, yeah, she must have been. No, it's wrong. No, there's no way the corpse was wearing gloves. Whoever it was, they were wearing fake nails, remember? I imagine trying to wear gloves over nails like that would have been a pretty big pain. Besides, Kyoko wears gloves to hide her hands, right? It'd be pretty weird for someone who's self-conscious about their hands to wear fake nails, don't you think? Jeez, man, you don't know women, huh? They're complicated like that. If anyone doesn't know women, it's you. Well, Kyoko, any thoughts? These gloves were custom made to the size of my hands to make sure they don't interfere with my daily life. If I wore fake nails, the gloves wouldn't fit properly. Then that's that. The dead body doesn't belong to Kyoko. Which should have been obvious since she's standing right here. Okay, so then, who's the real victim? First, we need to figure that out. That's the first thing I said. You're the one who's been dragging us around in circles. If Kyoko really is still alive, then who died? There's gotta be some way to figure it out. I don't think so. The face was scorched beyond recognition. And there wasn't any description in the Monokuma file. Well, if we can't identify the body... No, it's wrong! There was one clue left behind that we can use to identify the body. What? For real? If you're lying, you'll die a cruel and unusual death! Cruel and unusual death? This I gotta see! She's just being stupid. Ignore them, Makoto. Tell us what you're talking about. The key to figuring out who it was is the tattoo on the back of her hand. Oh, well, yeah. The design's pretty strange, huh? Is this... a dog? Her master must have made her get it. To be like, you're my bitch. Seriously? They really did something that humiliating? No, that's not it. The identity of the victim is hidden within that tattoo. Oh, really? The Fenrir Mercenary Corps. That's the name of the military group Mukuro Ikusaba belonged to. Okay, so... To show that they're a member of the team, each soldier that joins the squad would get a tattoo representing Fenrir somewhere on their body. Fenrir? Representation of Fenrir is a wolf. Fenrir, the wolf of Ragnarok. It's from Norse mythology. A huge world ending wolf beast. He's the child of the trickster god Loki and a female giant. Man, after all this time, we finally got a glimpse of the literary all star. A wolf tattoo. And exactly. The body we found had a tattoo of a wolf. Which means that person must have once belonged to Fenrir. So it must have been Mukuro. What? Oh, hold on. Isn't she 
she the one that was behind this whole thing? <laughs> you sound surprised, but you're absolutely right! Yes, indeed! The trial this time is to solve the murder of Mukuro Ikusaba! Are you saying the mastermind is dead? Now we have to have a clue cool last trial? No. It means we were wrong in thinking that Mukuro was the mastermind at all. But I mean, being the ultimate despair seems like a pretty mastermindy title to me. Maybe we shouldn't have been thinking of her as the ultimate despair in the first place. After all, looking at her profile, I didn't see anything that would fit such a description. All it said was that she was the ultimate soldier. If I remember correctly, that other information came from... Kyoko. That's what you told Makoto, right? So that means... Kyoko got it wrong? Hmm... Who was she? Who was Mukuro Ikusaba? She's been gone this whole time, and when she finally turns up, she gets killed! Usually, when there's a scene where an important character dies, it has a lot more detail. So you're saying she wasn't an important character? Which would mean she was the same as us. Just another participant. Then, who's the real mastermind? It must have been the Hope Speak Academy headmaster after all. No, the headmaster has nothing to do with it. But how can we trust that? We already know your information about Mukuro was wrong. My information was not wrong. Okay, okay! We're in the middle of a trial right now! Figuring out who killed Mukuro is first and foremost! Please limit all future prattle, chatter, and chit-chat as much as possible! Fine. Uncovering the identity of the Mastermind will have to wait. But remember this. No matter what happens, we will find out who you really are. I stake my family name on it. I have officially decided to completely ignore all such attempts at provocation. Now then, just so nobody's confused, let me state this one more time for the record. The reason we're having a class trial is because a murder among the students has taken place. Hammer that point straight into your big old brains! What you're saying is that both the victim and the culprit are part of the student body? Then... one of us killed Mukuro? Wait, no! There's a chance that there's some mystery 17th person who's been hiding all along! Nope! There are only 16 students in total that have been taking part in these events! Seriously? Then... One of us killed Mukuro? Who did it? Who's the killer this time? Get a hold of yourself. We've already narrowed down the list of possible suspects. Huh? I'm sure you realize who I'm talking about, right, Makoto? Who the evidence points to? I got it! You've narrowed it down to... Yoko and me, right? Why do you say that? Allow me to explain. Just after nighttime last night, I went to the garden, so I can confirm that at that point, there was no dead body there. So, the murder must have taken place after I left the garden. However, Hiro, Toko, Hina, and I were in the gym the entire time. The gym? That's right. The four of us were there trying to dismantle Monokuma. The whole time, we were very careful not to go anywhere alone. We even went to the bathroom in pairs. All of which is to say, the four of us all have alibis. The only ones without alibis... ...are me and Makoto. That's why you're able to narrow down the list of suspects. Exactly so. Um, I have something I'd like to say regarding the whole alibi thing. Are you thinking of raising an objection? Well, before that, I just want to try and get a better idea of what time the murder took place. 
doing that might reveal some kind of clue. Whatever you want, somebody go ahead and help him out. Me and Byakuya can both confirm that the body wasn't in the garden at... Well, it was after nighttime for sure. I'd say it must have been around 10 o'clock. So the murder must have happened after 10 p.m. Then I guess we can say the time frame for the murder was between then and when we found the body? Oh, but what time did we find the body? The one who saw the body first was Toko, right? And she went to go get the pickaxe. I got it! The body must have been discovered at 9 a.m., since that's when Toko went to get the pickaxe. Sure, the murder happened sometime between 10 at night and 9 in the morning. For me, I was already asleep before nighttime hit, so I don't have an alibi after 10 o'clock. But I'm sure I met up with everyone else before 9 this morning. We ran into each other in the dining hall, right? That was around... Oh, yeah! Right around 7.30. I remember checking right before I went in. So I'm totally sure about it. Which means from 10 p.m. to 7.30 a.m., you don't have an alibi. a time frame for the murder. It took place somewhere between 10 o'clock and 9. No, it's wrong! Actually, the murder couldn't have happened anywhere near 10 o'clock. It had to have taken place way later. And what makes you say that? Because of the sprinklers in the garden. The sprinklers are set to go off right at 7.30 every morning, right? So if the body had been in the garden before 7.30, then it should have been completely soaked. Oh, hold on! I remember this part perfectly! The body was wet. Dripping wet, in fact. Sorry, Toko, but you're wrong. I'm wrong? How? Are you saying only the mouth down south was wet? How dare you spew such a decent word? No, I'm saying that the body was wet, but not because of the sprinklers. What do you mean? By denying the sprinkler, are you trying to deny my entire existence? Man, you're totally wacko. If you really think it wasn't the sprinkler, Just remember what the body was like after the explosion, and you'll see why it wasn't the sprinklers. The top half of the body was wet, yes, but 
but the bottom half was completely dry. If the sprinklers got the body wet, shouldn't the whole body have been wet? So they only got the top wet? The bottom was completely dry? What a brutal maniac! I'm so sick of her. Let's just move on. The reason only the top half was wet was because... While the body was still on fire, I doused it with water. But only the part on fire, the top half. Oh, then I guess the sprinklers really didn't do it. So if the sprinklers didn't get the body wet, then the murder must have taken place sometime after the sprinklers turned on at 7.30 in the morning. Which means she must have been killed sometime between then and when the body was discovered at 9. But Makoto's alibi was only missing from 10 o'clock last night to 7.30 this morning, right? So there's no way Makoto could have done it. I guess you had an alibi after all. Good for you. In which case, the only one left without an alibi is Kyoko. I'd just like to say one thing. If you vote for me and I die here, the mystery of this school will stay hidden forever. Which is why I can't let that happen. So are you saying you're not the culprit? Of course I'm not. I have no reason to kill anyone. This is a trap the Mastermind has laid for us. A trap? <laughs> We're this far into the game and now you decide to blame me? Stop wasting time! Stop wasting energy! You really think your little trick is gonna work? Shut up, you! You got it, boss! Shutting up now! Anyway... Kyoko, you actually did have a reason to kill her. Huh? She did? She thought Mukuro was the ultimate despair. In other words, the mastermind behind everything. So she killed her to try and put a stop to all this. Isn't that right, Kyoko? But you made one catastrophic mistake. Mukuro wasn't the mastermind at all. And as a result, we were forced into another trial. Something I'm sure you weren't at all expecting. So, that was her motive? If she had a motive, and no alibi, well then... I think it's pretty clear Kyoko's gotta be the culprit. I'm not the only one without an alibi. Makoto's explanation is still insufficient. Huh? The sprinklers didn't get the body wet. But that doesn't mean the murder happened when he said it did. What are you... Because you see, there is a way the body could have avoided getting wet. Interesting. I'm listening. All it would take is covering the body with a certain something to keep it from getting wet. I got it! You're talking about the tarp, aren't you? You catch on quick. You're right. All you'd have to do is cover the body with the tarp, and that'd take care of the water. In fact, that's exactly what the killer did. The dirt pattern on the tarp can attest to that. Only one side of the tarp got dirty, because that's the side that got covered in water. The side that faced down over the body, meanwhile, kept perfectly clean. This proves that the killer used the tarp to keep the body from getting soaked. But why would they go to all that effort just to keep the body from getting wet? Most likely so they could cloud the issue of when the murder actually took place. In other words, to create an excuse exactly like the one Makoto just gave us. Wait, 
something's not right. And what might that be? By covering the body with the tarp, the killer prevented it from getting wet. So the reason the tarp was only dirty on one side is because the sprinkler got that side wet. But the underside of the tarp, it was totally spotless, right? It's because that side was protected from the water. Since it was facing down toward the body, of course it didn't get dirty. No, that's wrong! Actually, one side being clean is pretty strange if you think about it. Because the blood wasn't dry before the body got blown up, right? Yakuya said it himself. Not to touch it, or you might get some on you. If you put a tarp on a body in that state, it absolutely would have gotten blood on it. Well, maybe the culprit washed it, so nobody would know they'd used it. If they had, they would have washed both sides. Just washing the one side wouldn't hide anything. Oh! Yeah, true. More than that, what if the very blood we saw on the body was meant as a kind of camouflage? What if, after the killer used the tarp to avoid the sprinklers, they then covered the body in blood that didn't belong to the victim. You mean someone else's blood? Where would they get something like that? I know! They could have grabbed some of the blood packs from the nurse's office. That's what Hifumi did, right? When he pretended to be dead? No, that's not what happened this time. The killer got the blood from right there in the garden. Been chicken blood? What? Chicken blood? When I checked the chicken coop before the murder, there were five chickens. But after the murder, there were only four. So you're saying someone killed a chicken and then covered the body with its blood? Messed up. Killing a living thing just to do something like that is awful. They should have at least eaten it. I wonder if the killer had to get the blood from the scene so they wouldn't be spotted walking around. Anyway, there's no denying that a chicken went missing, which provides a basis for my theory. Perhaps, but even so, there's one thing that still doesn't make sense. You said the culprit used the tarp to avoid the water and then covered the body in blood, right? But if that's the case, then the blood should have soaked into the ground around the body. But that's not what we saw. Only the victim's clothing had blood on it. The ground was completely clean. I have to agree, that certainly is strange. Maybe they didn't apply the blood at the scene. Maybe they covered the coat in blood beforehand. They covered it beforehand? When you discovered the body, was it wearing the coat like you normally would? Um, I think so. Wait, no. The head was through the neck hole but the arms weren't in the sleeves. Then that settles it. Sorry, I'm having a tough time keeping up. What settles what? Here's what happened. The murder took place before the sprinklers went off. But the body didn't get wet because the killer covered it with the tarp. Then, later, 
At the same time the killer was gathering up the tar, they pulled the coat over the body, the coat they'd already covered in blood. This series of cover-ups was meant to disguise the actual time the murder occurred. They wanted us to think the murder happened sometime after the sprinklers had gone off at 7.30. If that's actually what took place, it certainly becomes possible that the murder happened earlier. But to pull all that off, wouldn't they have had to go back to the garden after the sprinklers turned off? That actually wouldn't have been all that difficult. Huh? They already had the coat ready, so they just had to grab the tarp and pull the coat over the body. They'd be done in no time. Maybe, but still. Hina, after you met up with Makoto in the dining hall, did you two stay together from that point on? Oh, no. I headed off to the gym, and Makoto didn't show up till later. Then he had plenty of time to spare, wouldn't you say? <sighs> That's not... Don't bother saying it's not possible. I must admit, Kyoko's reasoning is sound. Makoto's alibi is inadequate. Well then, it looks like we're back to square one. Makoto's alibi is no good, so once again, our suspects are him and Kyoko. For serious, man? Which one of them did it? Hey! Why don't we let luck decide? Let's flip a coin! 50-50 odds! Oh! See? Pretty good idea, right? No, not that! I just remembered something super serious! Well, don't just stand there! Out with it! You know that knife we found all black and burnt? One we found stuck in the body before it exploded, right? According to the Monokuma file, the knife went all the way through, from front to back. So, what about it? I'm pretty sure I'd seen that knife somewhere before. That's what I thought when I first saw it. I just remembered. Makoto? You don't seem surprised. You must have noticed earlier. Uh, yeah. Then why did you hide that fact? It's not that I hid it. It's just... Suspicious indeed. The knife we found stuck in the body came from Makoto. Now I'm totally convinced he did it. Well, thousand percent convinced. before, and that seals it! Makoto did it! Just because I had the knife once, that automatically makes me the killer? Well, getting stabbed is what killed her, right? No, it's wrong! Wait, hold on. The stab wound isn't what killed Mukuro. That should be clear from the description of the cover-up we just heard. Lies! 
We never talked about what killed her. No, don't you remember? The killer covered the dead body with the tarp and then put the bloody coat on it, right? In other words, the victim never wore that blood-stained coat until after they were dead. Okay, fine. So what? So, when we discovered the body, the knife had been thrust through the coat along with the body. Meaning, if she wasn't stabbed until the coat was put on, and she was already dead at that point, obviously the stab wound isn't what killed her. Maybe you stabbed her twice. Once to kill her and once to cover it up. The Monokuma file clearly states that there was only one stab wound. Oh yeah, it sure did. I totally forgot about that. Then the knife... ...was just another piece of camouflage set up by the true killer. They probably stabbed her to draw attention away from what actually killed her. Exploding the body afterward was probably meant to do the same thing. The explosion severely damaged the body, making it impossible to know what really killed her. It was all the killer's attempt to destroy all evidence of their crime. So they wanted us to notice the stab wound and then detonated the body afterward. They meant for us to latch onto the knife as the cause of death, then destroy any evidence proving otherwise. Oh, hey, I have a question. It kind of goes back to the beginning, but... What's the deal with that explosion anyway? Why'd the body just blow up all of a sudden like that? If you bothered to put that lump of gray matter between your ears to use, you'd know the answer. Well, if you're so smart, just tell me. I'll tell you. I bet some unknown quantum particle caused an atomic level spontaneous combustion. I might be dumb, but even I'm not dumb enough to believe that. Go ahead, Makoto. Tell her, or we won't make any headway on this. After the explosion, we found a tiny fragment of something on the ground near the body, right? That fragment reveals the cause of the explosion. Huh? You know, I feel like I've seen something like it somewhere before. That's only natural, because of course... We saw the same thing when we dismantled Monokuma. Part of a bomb. Oh! Then the explosion was because of the Monokuma bomb. Anyway, the culprit's motive is becoming more and more obvious by the minute. They wanted the knife wound to look like the fatal injury so that we'd suspect Makoto. And the only one who would benefit from that is the only other possible suspect. You, Kyoko. Hold on a second, Byakuya. What's the problem? Well, I just feel like... we need to think this through. We still don't know what actually killed the victim. That's true! It's definitely bugging me. What really killed her? Fine. I have no problem with that. Let us continue the debate. It won't change the facts of the case regardless. Shall we continue the debate? 
The victim's fatal injury has yet to be determined, correct? The explosion didn't kill her for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. She was already totally dead when that happened. And it wasn't me because of the knife, right? I mean, there's only one other thing. Oh, yeah. Um, according to the Monokuma file, that's gotta be it. There was evidence that showed she was hit on the back of her head. And more than that, the victim had suffered countless wounds across her entire body. Then, shall we continue the debate? The victim's fatal injury has yet to No, it's wrong! Mukuro died because of the blow to the back of the head she suffered. What about the wounds all over the rest of her body? They didn't have anything to do with it? The Monokuma file makes it clear that those weren't fresh wounds. Oh yeah, good point. If they were old, I guess they don't really matter. Okay, then we're safe in assuming the blow to the back of her head is what killed her. But then, what was the murder weapon? The Monokuma file says she was hit with a blunt object about as thick as a metal pipe. Oh, I bet it was the pickaxe! How is that even possible? If you hit someone with that, it'd cave their skull in completely! Well, maybe they held it the other way and hit her with the handle. No way! The balance would be all off. You wouldn't be able to swing it with any kind of power. I wouldn't mind testing it on you if you want. No thanks. I bet you just hit me with a metal end and call it an accident. I'd love to scoop out that nasty brain of yours, throw it on the ground and, and spit on it. <laughs> I feel the same way. Looks like we're on the same page this time. Seriously? We want to figure out what killed her, right? It just so happens we already know. We already know? I knew we could count on you, Master. So what was it? Go ahead and tell them, Makoto. Surely you've deduced the real murder weapon? I got it! Mukuro was hit in the back of the head with something. And that's what killed him. And that something was... The titanium arrow we found in the locker in the dojo. Arrow? That's what the culprit attacked Mukuro with? Indeed. There's no doubt about it. Are you sure? That sounds... kind of weird. Hey! How dare you backtalk, Master! You have no right! I'm not backtalking anything. I'm just saying what I think. Era. It was in the dojo locker, right? I have no doubt that was the murder weapon. Are you sure? You don't sound convinced. What's the problem? Well, because in the Monokuma file, it said the weapon must have been about as thick as a metal pipe, right? It seems like an arrow would just be too thin. No, it's wrong! You're right. Just the one arrow would have been too weak. That's why the killer used another weapon. Another weapon? Inside the dojo locker, we also found a balled up wad of duct tape. The killer probably uses duct tape to bind multiple arrows together. Bundling them together using the duct tape would easily create a single weapon as thick as a pipe. And that's exactly what the killer did. It's similar to Aesop's fable about the bundle of sticks. 
One stick is weak, but put them together, and they become strong. It's meant to teach cooperation. Damn, that's harsh. How is it harsh? Are you even listening? Anyway, that explains the murder weapon. As for who the culprit is that stashed the weapon in the dojo locker, it was you, Kyoko. I've never been to the dojo. Oh no, you absolutely have. How can you say that with such confidence? Because we have proof, of course. Don't we, Makoto? Uh, oh, um... Hmm? What's the matter? Surely you don't intend to protect a murderer. You know what will happen if you do, don't you? If you cover for the culprit, there's only one thing that can lead to. The death of us all, remember? Uh, of course I remember. Then show us. Show everyone the evidence that proves Kyoko went to the dojo. The one thing that proves Kyoko was in the dojo is right here, the key to the dojo lock. And how does that prove anything? Because I found it in your room. It was in my room? Don't bother trying to play dumb. That key is just the final piece of the puzzle. Your non-existent alibi, your clear motive, your attempts to frame Makoto for the crime. This all proves that you are the true culprit. You can't explain this away, so just give up. Hold on a second. Not this again. You really are dead set on defending her, aren't you? No, it's not that I want to defend her. It's just, there's one more thing I need to ask her. Kyoko, I want you to tell me something. Last night, you were in my room, weren't you? Why? What were you doing there? That's what I need to know. I was just... protecting you. What? That's enough. The time for idle chatter is over. A verdict is close at hand. Wait. I'm warning you. Don't make this mistake. I'm not the killer. I knew you were stubborn, but this is just getting ridiculous. Really? But you should know better than anyone I didn't do it. Can you tell me I'm wrong? I should know? Those words you just spoke. What do you mean? Exactly what I said. I'm not the killer. You should understand that more than anyone here. Yakuya, what are you hiding? Master would never hide something from me! There's proof that you aren't the culprit. Is that what you're saying? You stated a theory earlier. You said I hid the evidence of my crime in the dojo locker, and then left the locker key in my own room, correct? But... could I really have done that? Those words you just spoke. What exactly? I'm not the killer. You should understand. Yeah, yeah. Master would never hide- There's proof that you aren't the core. No, it's wrong! If I'm right, 
Kyoko wouldn't have been able to get into her room. Huh? Why not? Because she had given her room key to Byakuya. I see. So that's what you meant. And if I had the key to your room... Then obviously I had no way of getting in. Without my room key, I couldn't have possibly put the locker key in there myself. Am I wrong? It would appear not. Then you're finally starting to understand. Well, does no one have a rebuttal? Have you decided to accept her assertion as fact? I see. So you still refuse to accept it. I suppose we have to admit that Kyoko didn't put the locker key in her room. That it was someone else. But who else could it have been? I mean, Byakuya had a room key, right? You! What are you trying to imply? But of course, I have an alibi. From nighttime on, I was with you guys the entire time. I couldn't possibly have killed anyone, or put the key in Kyoko's room. Well, someone had to put the key in there. There's only one other possibility I can think of. Someone could have had the key on them, then once they arrived at the scene, pretended to find it there. Makoto, right? I don't see any other option. Wait a second. You've got it all wrong. Let's think about it one more time. There's got to be a hidden side to this case. Huh? A hidden side? First of all, there's something off about this entire trial. You all see it, don't you? Mukuro, who we didn't even know existed, suddenly shows up dead, and then we're thrown into a trial. And Kyoko even said, it's a trap the Mastermind set for us. So that's why this has to be... Okay, time's up! Huh? Time's up! Class trial's all over! Everyone can stop talking now! What? Time's up? What do you mean, time's up? There's no time's up, since when have we... It's because you were late, so we had to push back the start time. So then, it's time for voting time, okay? Everyone, please vote using the lever in front of you. Voting time? Now, who will be chosen as the Blackened? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? Hey, hold on! What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be?
expect you to forgive me. I know this is all my fault. Let's give it everything we've got! It's punishment time! is down. In other words... What, what did you say? So...
Just a second. It smells... awful. Indeed. So... Hey. However, it's true. In other words, indeed. Makoto. That's right. It would seem... Why is that? Correct. However... So... 
In other words, I Huh? I No matter what? So, um I However, so it's true. Indeed. However, I so however However, anyway, indeed. That's right. In other words, hey. Indeed. I... Anyway... However, correct. Indeed.
correct. In other words, Makoto. Anyway... Hey. So...
wrong. Right. Indeed. It's true. However, I What? Wrong. However, I... So... However, right. However, so, however, I, correct. Wrong. Hey. Indeed. That's right.
Indeed. Shall we go? Shall we go? Well now, well now. I don't believe it. Pum pum. What? Doesn't matter. That's right. Because
Indeed. Listen to me. Hey. That's what we have to do. It's true. It's time for one last showdown. One final battle between hope and despair. Hey. <laughs> Bear it! What's wrong? In other words... You guys! <laughs> I can barely contain myself! It's true. <laughs> you guys! <laughs> Listen to me. Hey. What's wrong? Hey. <laughs> Listen. However... Whew. So... Because... So... Listen.
indeed. However, in other words, so... It would seem... In other words... Correct. Hey. That's right. It's true. Makoto. In other words... At the very least... Indeed. Right. It's true. Indeed. In other words... However... Wrong. Whew. However, correct. Hey. However, Anyway, shall we go?
just a second. However, is that Makoto? Y you guys, it is. There's no two ways about it. That's Makoto. Huh? You s survived? Jeez. You're like a stubborn little cockroach, you know that? I'm just asking to make sure, but you're not a ghost, right? What? What the heck? That's right. Hmm. Makoto. Yes. Hmm. It's true. Huh? In other words. Huh? How about that? Wrong. Huh? I see. Huh? That's right. However, what what did you say? However,
anyway. Indeed. So, in other words... In other words... You've all probably figured this out by now, but at this point, the killing game has now entered true ending mode. So, in the name of fairness, I will unlock every room in the school. Look wherever you want. Solve the mystery in whatever way you see fit. <laughs> then we can all meet up at the class trial, okay? <laughs> hmm? That's fine. <laughs> In the name of my family. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Indeed. Hmm. You know? Just a second! How about that? 
However, in other words, however, whew, correct. Well,
Makoto. It would seem... Anyway... Wrong. Correct. In other words, Would you? Well, now, eh. Hey. 
because... In other words... It would seem... I... Hey! So... Hey! Correct. Just a second. I... Anyway...
Photo.
<laughs> yeah!
Just a second. Hey, um... <laughs> yep. Um... Yes, indeed. You're a liar. So, in other words... I see. In other words... So, in other words... <laughs> Interesting.
stop talking. It's all clear now.
Announcement. Is everyone working hard? Is your investigation coming along nicely? Well then, since you're all giving it your best, your generous headmaster will give you a little hint. <laughs> For those of you who are interested, please make your way to the gym ASA possible. Um...
What are you gonna do? Thank <laughs> you. 
you reach that certain age? Right. Makoto. Indeed. Listen. I knew it. Indeed. would seem Because...
Indeed. Indeed. Is that right? Because... Wrong. Listen. However... So then... At the very least. Right. In other words. then Why is that? Because... What? If that's true... Makoto... I... So... Makoto. So... Anyway... In other words... However... I...
子。Why? Makoto. <laughs> so then. Okay then, are you ready to begin? I do apologize, but I hope you don't mind if I record our conversation. I'm a little slow, you know. I never really got the hang of taking notes while having a conversation. So this video is meant to serve as a kind of contract substitute. It's not that I don't trust you guys. It's more like insurance. So please don't worry too much. Now then, let me get straight to the point. There is a chance that you may have to spend the rest of your life here in the school. Can you accept that? Thank you, and I'm sorry about all this. Well, I can promise you that I will do everything in my power to keep you safe. As the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, I give you my word.
So, Makoto, before we begin, I should let you know that I'll be recording our conversation. Yes. Now, shall we get straight to the point? Makoto, there's a chance you may have to spend the rest of your life here in the school. Can you accept that? Yes. I'm sorry I'm putting you through all this. Well, I mean, you don't have much of a choice, do you? But I promise that as long as you're in this school, I will do everything I can to protect you. As the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, that's the very least I can do for you. Say what? Too bad. <laughs> That's right. It would seem... Hey. Makoto, listen. However,
Oh, I'm on fire! Yes! My beautiful scissors! <laughs> <laughs> well now. Thrills, chills, kills! That's fine. Feeling white. Stop talking. <laughs> you guys. Ah! <laughs> hmm. In the name of my family. Since this will be the final class trial, I've come up with a special rule. So listen up! If you can figure out Mukuro's killer and go on to solve the mystery of this school, you guys win! But if you can't, then I win! And of course, waiting for the loser is the super exciting, super heart-pounding punishment! Are you saying that if you lose, you'll execute yourself? Yep, sure will. And that's final? No loopholes? No wiggling out of it later? Of course not! Bears never go back on their words! Never mind all that. I just have one question for you. Oh, you're taking this serious, huh? Are you feeling okay? Is the mastermind only one person? Hmm? Don't bother. I already know the answer. You're all the mastermind, aren't you? You're all out to get me! I'm right, aren't I? I knew it! You guys have all been working together, haven't you? I have evidence, so I know I'm right! Hey, you stole my line! 
You're all out to get me. I'm sure of it. I have evidence of my own. What a coincidence. I, too, have evidence to present. Evidence that proves everyone other than me has been working together. W what Wait, hold on. This doesn't make any sense. How can the three of us each have that kind of... No, that's wrong! It's not just you three. I have evidence, too. What? You too? The evidence you're all referring to is this group photo, right? Well, well yeah. Huh? Wait, but mine's different. With the picture you have, I'm in it. But that can't be right, because in my picture... See? I'm the only one not in it. Hero, you have a picture too, right? Let's see it. Okay, but be careful with it. It's pretty important evidence. So the secret in these pictures has been revealed. Secret or whatever, I don't care. You guys are all in on this together. That's why I'm the only one missing. But you're in my picture. You're the ones trying to trick me. So the whole purpose behind these photos was to get us questioning and fighting with each other. The mastermind laid a trap to make us each think everyone else was working against us. Huh? I laid a trap? A trap? How rude! What grounds do you have for such audacious accusations? In each case, the only one not in the picture is the person who received it. So, in the picture I got, I'm the only one missing. In the picture Hina got, she's the only one missing. And in the picture Hero got, he's the only one missing. As long as we're talking about it, I suppose I should show you my photo as well. In other words, Monokuma gave each of us a group photo in which that person wasn't included. And when we each saw our picture, we just assumed everyone else was the enemy? <laughs> Figured it out, huh? Yeah, I thought that must be it. But how was that a hint? Listen, can I see everyone's group photo one more time? It's not directly connected to what we're talking about, but I'd like to double check something. Sure, no problem. Yeah, I don't mind. Forget about the photo already. Ugh. Trying to trick me with such an obviously fake photo. I'm still pissed about that. And on top of that, they went to all that trouble to make it look like we were wearing matching uniforms. Hmm? So you think they're fake? 
<laughs> no, 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 I assure you, they're quite real. What are you talking about? There's no way! Yeah! I don't remember ever taking a picture like that. So it's gotta be a fake. I'm sure of it. But you know, can we really be so sure? Huh? Don't get me wrong. I don't remember taking this picture either. But is that really enough to be absolutely positive they're fake? What do you mean? say that somehow we'd all lost our memories that could explain it couldn't it oh I get it so we all just lost our memories at the same time and forgot about the photo makes sense as if you expect me to believe such an unbelievable occult type story yeah we all lost our memories that's just crazy Spontaneous amnesia? Since when did this turn into some kind of sci-fi fantasy? I promise you, I haven't lost my memory. Ever since I got to this school, I remember everything that's happened. No, it's wrong! Those photos aren't the only things that point to the possibility of memory loss. This DVD does the same thing. You're not going to show us something indecent, are you? N no, it's nothing like that. It's a video of all of us being interviewed by the Hoax Peak Academy headmaster. When you say all of us, you mean... I mean all of us, including you. You lie! I never did any kind of interview. No, it's not a lie. Just watch the DVD and you'll see for yourself. The headmaster did, in fact, interview you. What are you saying? I didn't imagine you would remember. It's not about whether or not I remember. You expect me to believe all this? That I... I lost my memory somehow? Well, we don't have any way to refute it, so we have no choice but to accept it as reality. How can you say that? We're talking about living, breathing amnesia here! To be honest, I have something else on my mind right now. Something else? You said the DVD contains recordings of us being interviewed by the Headmaster, right? What were the interviews about? The headmaster sat each of us down, one at a time, and asked us the same question. He asked us if we could accept the idea of spending the rest of our lives in this school. What kind of question is that? And how did we answer? We'd say no, obviously. Actually, we all said we could. Even me. I heard myself say yes. I could spend the rest of my life at this school. Why? Why would 
did you say yes to something like that? I don't know. I don't remember a thing. The same goes for everyone else. Nobody remembers. You don't remember choosing to live here forever, or even talking to the headmaster about it at all. It doesn't matter if I remember or not. Even if I bought the whole amnesia thing, the idea that I would want to live here forever? That's just insane! How can I believe that? Insane or not, we can't move forward until you accept it. Am I right? You sure are, cause it's all true! What? I know it sounds absurd, but if it's the truth, there's nothing we can do about it. Indeed. We only have one path in front of us. Then... we really... Yep! You all totally lost your memory at the same time! This is all... making my head hurt. And this isn't like some normal kind of memory loss. You stole those specific memories from us, didn't you? Oopsie! You figured that part out too, huh? Of course. There's no way we would all just happen to get amnesia at the same time. But how could someone just steal our memories? How? Come, come, come. That hardly matters right now. If I said it was hypnotism, would you believe me? Or we opened up your skulls and messed with your brains? Would you really believe anything I said? How it happened doesn't matter right now. What matters is figuring out what memories you took from us. That's what you're trying to say, right? <laughs> I knew I could count on you! The interview with the headmaster, taking that group photo, those can't be the only memories we lost. There must have been a purpose to it all. A reason for taking away our memories. Of course there was a purpose. It all has to do with the original motive. You mean the motive you came up with to try and get us to all kill each other? That has something to do with the memories you stole from us? <laughs> it sure does. But that part's still a secret. Anyway, I'm sure it's not easy, but let's all focus on the class trial for the murder of Mukuro Ikusaba. Okay. So you want us to figure out who killed her before we do anything else? So who did it? Who killed her? Whoever did it is the same one who's behind everything. That much I'm sure of. But when you think about it, is the Mastermind really here in the school? Of course! They have to be here somewhere. What makes you so sure? Um... What does make me so sure? Exactly! You're just making stuff up! There's no way the Mastermind is here! The Mastermind is probably a million miles... No, it's wrong! There's no question that the Mastermind is somewhere within the school. How do you know? Did you find some evidence or something? In the back of the data center, I found a panel that controls Monokuma. The Mastermind must have been using that to control him all this time. So there can't be any doubt. The Mastermind has been inside the school all along. There can't be any doubt. In which case, there also can be no doubt that the Mastermind is one of us. What? Why? Recall what Makoto told us Monokuma said to him earlier. Shh. 
So if the mastermind is in the school, we have to assume it can only be that 16th student. But how'd they manage to survive all of this? So we're the only ones here? It's not me! I'm not the mastermind! Well, it's not me! I blame Makoto! What? Why me? Cuz! It's super weird how you're the only one who survived being executed! Oh, I get it! The only way he could have survived is if he was actually the mastermind himself, right? Aw, oh, nuts! You got me! Wait! What are you trying to say? Everyone, calm down. There's no reason to panic. The Mastermind's true identity will become clear soon enough. Just as soon as we find out who killed Mukuro. That's a good point. Rather than wasting time bickering, we should put our minds to work solving this mystery. Yeah, well, how much time have we already spent talking about the murder? He's right. What more is there to talk about? If you want something to talk about, I think there might be one thing. We haven't fully established what Mukuro's fatal injury was. Huh? But I thought we figured that out. She died with- No, that isn't actually what killed her. It was something entirely different. Wouldn't you agree, Makoto? I got it! All of the wounds covering her body. That's what really killed her. Hey, now hold on a second. You did read the Monokuma file, right? It made it pretty clear. Those wounds were made at least a few days ago. So they can't possibly be what killed her. Consider this. What if the murder itself took place at least a few days ago? What? What if, when we discovered her body, she'd already been dead for several days? If that's true, then naturally the wounds that killed her would appear to be however many days old. That doesn't make any sense. Because... because she had all those wounds before she ever came here. Huh? How do you know that? Isn't it obvious? She was the ultimate soldier, right? So that means... Y you know... You're wrong. <laughs> she denied me <laughs> before I could even say anything. <laughs> Come on. I mean, you think I'm not weird, okay? At least listen to what I have to say before you deny me. didn't suffer those wounds in battle. The file we found in the headmaster's room said as much. Despite the time she spent in battle after battle as a member of Fenrir, when she entered the school, she hadn't sustained a single injury. To uh, be denied so completely... Actually, it's kind of refreshing. Of all of 
master's training? Anyway, so we can be sure that Mukuro suffered all those wounds after coming to this school. In which case, they could be the very thing that killed him. As a matter of fact, it's hard to imagine any other possibility. When examining her body, I found that her stomach and head wounds came after she was already dead. Unless anyone has any better suggestions, I think we can say this with confidence. The wounds Mukuro sustained all over her body are what ultimately killed her. But if that's what killed her... Then does that mean she's really been dead for who knows how long? That's exactly what it means. When we found her body in the garden, she'd already been dead for several days. So then, what about the little matter of what happened last night? Makoto, you said you were attacked in your room by a masked assailant. If Mukuro had already been dead for several days, certainly it couldn't have been her. So who was it that attacked you? I got it! The one who attacked me was the true mastermind. When we discovered Mukuro in the garden wearing the same mask, I naturally assumed she must have been the one who attacked me. But I was wrong. It wasn't her at all. It was the mastermind. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, don't mind me. I'm just getting a little impatient sitting here listening. I think I'm gonna jump in. Let's start off with a nice, easy question. Your assumption that I attacked Makoto is just that, right? An assumption. You can't really know who was under that mask, can you? I mean, that's the whole point of a mask. The true identity of the masked attacker is Mukuro Ikusaba. At least, that's what I think. <laughs> Do you have any evidence that might convince me otherwise? You never saw their face, right? So you can't have any idea who was under that mask. I'm telling you now, it was Mukuro Ikusaba! You're wrong. Even without seeing their face, there's another part of the attacker we can use to prove it wasn't her. Oh? And what is this other part? Is it the right hand? Or the left hand? Maybe the right foot. Or perhaps the left foot. Or could it be the hips? You never saw their face, right? So you can't have any... I'm telling you now, it was... No, it's wrong. Mukuro had a tattoo on her right hand, if I remember correctly. A representation of Fenrir, 
In other words, a wolf tattoo. But I saw the right hand of the person who attacked me. And there was no such tattoo. So there's no way the person behind the mask was Mukuro. Yeah, well, okay. You got me. I guess it wasn't her. But that still doesn't prove that it was me. It could have been, you know, someone else, right? Hiro, Toko, Hina, and I all have solid alibis for that entire night. Yeah! We were in the gym tearing you apart, so it could have been any of us. Oh, okay, sure. It couldn't have been any of you. But what about Kyoko? It totally could have been her. Uh-oh! No snappy comeback. Did I score a bullseye? If you insist, I don't mind showing you. Huh? Show me what? What do you think? I'll show you the one thing that proves beyond a shadow of a doubt it wasn't me. Your hands! Awful, isn't it? It happened when I was first learning to be a detective. I was inexperienced. I thought you didn't want anyone to see those scars. If it means we get another step closer to unmasking the mastermind, it doesn't really bother me. My scars should suffice as proof. Makoto, did the person who attacked you have scars like mine? No, not at all. I'm positive. Then this much has been made clear. There can be no doubt that the one who attacked Makoto is the true mastermind. <laughs> this is just awful! On top of my secret being revealed, I had to look at those positively grotesque scars of yours! Uh, sorry, did I say that out loud? I do hope I didn't hurt your feelings. Not at all. You can say whatever you want. Sure, as long as it means pushing me farther into the corner, right? But I'm not cornered just yet. Because if you haven't noticed, the circumstances surrounding Mukuro's death are totally unknown. That's true. All we know right now is she was killed a good while before this morning. On the contrary, we don't know anything other than that. You're not going to tell us she was already dead before we arrived here or something, are you? <laughs> In that regard, you have nothing to worry about. I promise you, without a doubt, she died after our little killing game began here. Then somehow, she was killed in secret without any of us knowing. And after she died, who knows how much time went by before we found her, right? Did the culprit stash her somewhere? She couldn't have been in the garden the whole time, could she? 
she was, she would have been totally decomposed. Just like your brain! Then, she was being stored somewhere? But... To hide a body here... To just store it somewhere? Mukuro's body was probably kept hidden in the bio lab. Bio lab? You mean on the fifth floor? That's right. It's actually set up for use as a morgue. So it's the perfect place to hide a body, and it'd keep the body preserved at the same time. Then you're also saying the body was moved from the bio lab to the garden. And I have no doubt that that's exactly what happened. In fact, I have proof. I got it! What makes me so sure the body was carried from the bio lab to the garden is... The tarp that we found in the garden. When I was checking it over again, I noticed something. I noticed that some text had been stamped on one corner of the tarp. Oh, it says Biolab. Holy cow! How'd you notice that tiny little thing? Makoto's nitpicky nature seems to have surfaced with perfect timing. This proves that the tarp originally came from the bio lab. In fact, there's a whole stack of tarps just like it in there. So when the killer moved the body to the garden, they must have grabbed a tarp to wrap it in. Then they simply left it as it was to protect against the sprinklers and put the coat on it afterwards. You made everything sound so amazingly consistent. <laughs> That's just a wild guess! Where's your evidence? Prove that the body was wrapped in a tarp and moved! There is no evidence. I was simply explaining what I think happened. But you seem to be getting pretty worked up about it, wouldn't you say? Worked up? Now that the conversation has turned to the topic of the bio lab, you must be getting pretty nervous. Because the key to uncovering your secret identity is hidden within that room, isn't it? Are you talking about unmasking the mastermind? You see, the bio lab contained an inconsistency. One so major it can't be overlooked. La la la, I can't hear you! La 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 la! Such a child. Oh well, just ignore him. What about that one thing? What one thing? <laughs> what do you think I'm talking about? Your family. <laughs> Don't tell me you forgot about that video message. So what do you think? Are you sure your family's still okay? Why are you bringing that up now? Your mom, your dad, your little sister. What do you think has happened to your family? Are they really as safe as you might have assumed? Stop! 
stop talking about that! Calm down, Makoto. He wants you to get upset. Are you sure about this? That's impossible! Are you sure about this? That's impossible! What? What do you want? Are you sure about this? That's impossible! Are you sure about this? That's impossible! about this? That's impossible! I'm not listening! This should prove it. <laughs> the inconsistency Kyoko's talking about is... the lights! Get me! Ha! What are you talking about? Uh, what about the lights? Like I said before, the bio lab also acts as a morgue. And as part of that, a giant refrigerator was installed in there. That's where everyone who's died is stored. And it was set up so that when a slot had a body in it, a blue light would turn on. In other words, if the blue light is on, that means there's a body in that slot. But I counted up the number of blue lights that were on, including the one Mukuro was in. And there were only nine. Why does that matter? You gotta give me the bite-sized version here, man. I got it! Ten of the lights should have been on. Any other number is incredibly suspicious. Suspicious? Yeah. That's simple. Just recall who's died here so far, and it should become clear. should make you immediately suspicious. But according to the lights in the bio lab, only nine people were being stored there. You're saying a dead body just up and disappeared? I got it! The mastermind destroyed one of the bodies to get rid of evidence. But if they wanted to do that, they would have destroyed Mukuro's body since they actually killed her. And yet, her body was left alone. Then, whose body disappeared? It may very well be that none of them disappeared. But if that's true, then why doesn't the body count match? Including Monokuma's execution, there have apparently been ten deaths, but there were only nine bodies. That's the point I'm trying to make. I'm completely lost. How can the number of victims be less than the number of murders? I got it! 
what about if the same person was killed twice? Huh? Killed twice? Officially, ten murders have been committed so far. But one of the victims may have been murdered, and then murdered again. Murdered and murdered again? If that's the case, there could have been ten killings, but still only nine victims, right? Technically, you're right, I guess. Still, something like that could easily have happened. No. It is what happened. Sounds like you're already convinced. Then can you tell us who was killed twice? It was Mukuro, of course. Before she was killed as Mukuro Ikusaba, she was killed as someone else. And that's why the body had to be stored in the bio lab until the moment we found it in the garden. No, 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 that's crazy talk. She was killed as someone else? Come on! Besides, who could that someone else even have been? All you have to do is look at those bodily injuries of hers, and that will become obvious. Nothing's gonna become obvious! Because Kyoko's totally delusional! with someone else that Mukuro was killed at. Was it Sayaka Maizono? Junko Enoshima? Leon Kuwata? Chihiro Fujisaki? Mando Owada? Kiyotaka Ishimaru? Kifumi Yamada? Celestia Lu... whatever? Or maybe... Sakura Ogami? No, no, no. There's no way anyone was murdered twice! No, it's wrong! Junko! Wasn't her fatal injury pretty similar to Mukuro's? What do you mean? Well... Remember what happened to her? She was impaled by a bunch of spears all over her body. And Mukuro died from a number of wounds across her body. When you compare that to the stab wounds Junko suffered... Then the similarities match? Yes, and those are the only fatal injuries that match up. That explains why those two bodies are actually one and the same. So let me see if I have this straight. Junko, or someone going by that name, was stabbed to death with multiple spears. Then her body was kept in the bio lab for however long before being dragged out again. Only this time, it was presented as the corpse of one Mukuro Ikusaba. It all matches up, right? Those wounds Junko suffered could easily be these same injuries. It's really true? Mukuro and Junko are the same person? Wait, so then... What does it all mean? It means that there haven't been ten victims, but nine. Which also means that among the people we thought were dead, one is still alive. And that's the true identity of the Mastermind? Who is it? Who's behind all this? We already know the answer to that. It's Mukuro. She's still alive! She took... Yuko's body! And made it look like she was the one who died! So, Mukuro is still alive! She's gotta be! A little silence? Then 
I must be right. I'm right, aren't I? The body we found in the garden was Mukuro. That's one thing we can be sure of. The body's appearance and measurements are consistent with her records. Right, Kyoko? She was 5 foot 6 inches tall and weighed 97 pounds. Her vitals were 31, 21, 32. Everything in her profile is consistent with that course. And then there's the matter of the Fenrir tattoo. So there's no question it's her. But... If Mukuro's not the mastermind, then... Who's actually still alive? Here's my answer! Junko is still alive. It's the only possibility. Are you sure about that? Huh? I admit, since Mukuro is undoubtedly dead, Junko does seem to be the only other explanation. But we saw her get impaled. She died right before our very eyes. If Junko were still alive, the death we saw would have had to have been some kind of charade. But you yourself confirmed she was dead, did you not? There's no question, Junko was dead. So, the idea that she's still alive... It must be wrong. Then you're withdrawing your previous statement? <laughs> I know you gave it your best shot, but too bad! I guess your conclusion was a dud! <laughs> too bad! Too bad! This case hasn't been decided just yet. Oh? You haven't given up already, have you, Makoto? Not. There's no way I'd give up that easy. That's all well and good, but how do you intend to solve the problem standing in your way? Junko absolutely died. Mukuro absolutely died. Then both of them are dead, right? There can't be any kind of survivor story. I think we need to look at this from the opposite direction. direction? Let's assume Junko is still alive. If so, how could she have survived?
understand? That's it! What if she switched places with someone else? Switch places? That's right! Before the spears could kill her, she got someone to take her place! Specifically, Mukuro Ifusaba! Then that would make it Mukuro's corpse that showed up later. Which is why the body's height and weight and everything match Mukuro's profile, right? I don't know anything about this switching places thing, but... That had to be Junko who got stabbed to death, right? Yeah, you're saying they switched? When could they even have done that? Right when she was uh, about to die? Like she used some kind of ninja replacement technique? Good point. There's just no way they could have switched like that. So maybe the whole idea is wrong. Switch places from the very beginning. What? From the beginning? Yes, from the moment we first met. If that's when they switch. Then they wouldn't have had to switch at the moment of death, right? After all. The one we saw at that point would have already been Mukuro. But hold on. So you're saying the Junko we first met... ...is actually Mukuro all along? Um, we'd already met her? I had, like, a normal conversation with her. When we first met, none of us knew who anyone else was. So Mukuro could have simply told us her name was Junko. And we never would have known the difference. That would easily allow the two of them to switch places from the very beginning. But Mukuro had a tattoo on the back of her hand, right? Junko never had any tattoo like that, did she? She could have hidden it with foundation or something like that. If she did, it likely melted away in the explosion, exposing the tattoo after the body was extinguished. Plus, there were the fake nails found on the hands of Mukuro's body. They were the same fake red nails she was wearing when we all met for the first time. But if she really did use the foundation... Correct. Even if there was no tattoo on her hand, I couldn't say for certain it wasn't Mukuro. So I'm glad nobody noticed that glaring hole when we were trying to figure out who attacked Makoto. But too bad for you, Monokuma. You can't deny it anymore. Wait, so... this whole thing was a setup from the very beginning? If that's true, it was quite an elaborate plan to be sure. Making it look like Mukuro was Junko. The reason such an elaborate plan was possible is because the two of them were working together. So Mukuro... The ultimate despair teamed up with someone like her. In other words, it would be fair to say that Junko herself was also the ultimate despair. What's wrong? Lost the will to fight back. I think he's just afraid. Afraid? What's that mean, afraid? 
Fear is only possible where hope is possible. I only have despair, so fear is an alien concept to me. Then why haven't you been saying anything? Because it's a bunch of nonsense. Junko's my secret identity. <laughs> As if. Then why did you try and protect Junko's real identity? I tried to protect her identity. When did I do that? I was in the AV room, watching the DVD of our interviews with the Headmaster. I couldn't finish watching the video. And the reason you did that is because you didn't want me to see the real Junko, did you? Oh, yeah. If everyone was in that video, of course Junko would have had to show up. And if Makoto saw the real Junko, it would have been totally obvious that the Junko we met was an imposter. But that whole power thing was just a fluke! thing you tried to cover up. You did the same thing with this group photo. Uh, uh, uh oh. I noticed it just a little while ago when we were all comparing the photos we got. In all the photos, there's a certain similarity, an unusual circumstance. But what's so unusual about them? Into every single photo is that you can't see her face. Uh, 
It's hard to believe her face would just happen to be hidden in every single picture, don't you think? And on top of that, in this photo, you can see that Mukuro is clearly visible. So in other words, at that point, the two of them hadn't switched yet. With all that in mind, there's no doubt that the girl whose face is hidden here is the real Junko. Which is why you had to have pictures that didn't show her face. Because if we could have seen her face, then it would have clearly revealed that the Junko in the pictures wasn't the Junko that we knew. Xanadu! I believe everything Makoto said is true. Junko and Mukuro switched places before we met either of them. So she killed Mukuro, who had taken her place, making it look like she died. And the real Junko is still alive. And she's the one behind this whole murderous situation. This killing game. She's the true mastermind and the ultimate despair. Xanadu times two! With this, the identity and the crimes of the mastermind have been exposed. No, no, wait, hold on! Don't bother trying to deny it. There's no more room for debate. You don't have anywhere left to run. I'll prove everything, right now! Exactly what happened. We met the ultimate fashionista, Junko and Oshima, right after we all arrived. But that wasn't the real Junko. The girl we saw before us was actually the 16th student who had taken Junko's place. And that girl's name was Mukuro Ikusawa. But it wasn't long before she died at the hands of Monokuma. In other words, the mastermind, Junko and Oshima.
Her body was kept in a bio lab, which had been converted into a morgue. Until Junko decided to put her body to use. Junko dragged the body out of the bio lab, using the tarp to carry her to the garden. She fabricated the murder to try and frame Kyoko, who proven to be one big thorn in her side. Meanwhile, she wanted us all to think Mukuro was still alive and hiding somewhere inside the school. So she put on a mask and then attacked me. After making sure I'd gotten a good look at the mask, she left the room. Then she put the same mask on Mukuro's body. This was all to make us think the person who attacked me and the corpse were one in the same. She wanted us to believe the murder had only recently taken place. Finally, by strapping a bomb to the body, she was able to destroy any remaining evidence. She needed to hide the body's true identity. She had to make sure we didn't find out it was actually the same person we'd met in the beginning. This is the truth behind Mukuro's murder. And the one who carried it all out is the true mastermind. The one controlling Monokuma. The real Junko and Oshima! the whole story behind this incident. Well, what do you have to say to that? What, are you broken again? You can't get out of this, so don't even try. Come on, it's time you finally revealed yourself. It's not like you're an endangered species or something. How long do you plan to keep hiding? Give it up, Junko. The game's over. Over? <laughs> Did you really think the story would end once we reached the climax of the case? Wrong! There's still plenty more to go! Waiting so very long for peasants like you to appear. If you swear your fealty to us, we will reward you with half of the entire world. We've even drawn up the deed already. We will grant you honor, status, and some of our home cooking. Have you made your choice? Will you serve under us? Oh, did you think I was being serious? Sorry, I was just messing with you. It's been so long since I've had an audience. Even I'm not sure what kind of role I'm supposed to play. Anyway, looks like I've finally been set free. Having to play Monokuma all the time, day after day. It was like I was stuck in purgatory, or like a slow suicide. I get bored so easy, you know? Your face! Huh? What about my face? What's wrong with my beautiful face? People have told me I'm cuter than a hundred chihuahuas combined. I feel like... 
this isn't the first time I've seen you. I got it! That's right! It was before I ever came to this school. I remember seeing the magazine cover. And you were on it! Wow, you have a pretty good memory. I guess that's why you've made it this far, huh? So I was right. Then what you told me in the main hall when this all began... Sometimes a little lie is necessary to keep things moving along. Wouldn't you agree? That explains why she didn't quite seem the same. Because she was a different person all along. I'm me. And Mukuro is Mukuro. She tried her best. But there's just no way she could have passed as the ultimate fashionista. Two people can never become one as long as the walls of mind and body exist. Not even if they're twins. Twins? I know, it's such a cliche, right? I'm almost embarrassed to admit it. So basically, Mukuro and I had your stereotypical twin relationship. The older sister, tough and proud, that was Mukuro. The younger sister, smart and cute, that was... <laughs> Me, Junko fucking Anishima! And together, we were the Despair Sisters, aka the Ultimate Despair! Whoa! She's a totally different person now! Like I said, I get bored easy as hell! I even get fucking bored with myself! But if, if you're twins, why do you have different last names? Oh, that again? You have any idea how many times people ask me that shit? Maybe it's new to your dumb ass, but it forced me to tears. Answering the same questions over and over? Just make up whatever answer you want, I don't give a shit. The truth's fucking lame anyway. But... If she was your twin, that means... You killed your own sister? And for reasons deeper and darker than the ocean. Well, I suppose I'd better explain. For my plan to work, someone had to be able to control the killing game from behind the scenes. The so-called mastermind had to operate Monokuma, keep an eye on everyone, things like that. But after looking at the situation, I determined it would be impossible for Mukuro to perform such duties. Because naturally, she turned out to be the letdown of the family. Leaving me behind to run off and join some band of mercenaries. Such a disappointment. So, I decided to play the role of director and have her join the rest of you in your school life. I could have let her work alongside me, but she would have been useless to me that way. Besides, 15 students seemed like a solid number to start with. Of course, the fact that she was the ultimate soldier posed something of a problem. She had what I call the three atrocities. Atrociously rank, atrociously filthy, atrociously repulsive. It was atrociously clear just how out of touch she was with the rest of society. Meanwhile, my ultimate fashionista status has an undeniable appeal that I didn't want to go to waste. And that's... Why you switched identities? Sadly, her inability to match my personality was even greater than I'd calculated. It was a lost cause. She was nothing more than a bit player, an extra unworthy of lines. Being the utter disappointment that she was, 
anyone would have expected her to get killed off right away. Which is precisely why I killed her. To meet everyone's expectations. That can't be your only reason, can it? Well, no, of course not. I also did it to avoid becoming bored. I've never been a stickler for following a plan to the letter, you know? If I planned everything out and knew just what was gonna happen, that'd be so boring. So, I changed things just a bit and decided to use Mukuro to make a little point. In other words, Mukuro's death was a one-sided, premeditated act of betrayal. Just as I suspected. When Mukuro was killed, she must have been as surprised as anybody else. <laughs> so, you figured it out? Well, you're right! There's no way Mukuro could have pulled off such a convincing performance. But she did teach you all a very valuable lesson, don't you think? like that you sacrificed your own sister how does that not even bother you what i sacrificed her that's what's got you so hot under the collar Jeez. misunderstanding sure are scary we were the ultimate despair you know so we never had any kind of hope or expectations despair as long as I can remember. Like I never should have been born at all. When I was born, I cried tears of total despair. So that's why for us, it's not a big deal whether we die or kill. We're just those kinds of people. We can do anything. We've always been filled with despair. So when we do something, we go all the way and live without regret! So you just murdered your own sister and didn't think anything of it? That's not true at all. We were twins. How could I not be sad? That's why it gets me so... excited. Killing my precious sister with my own two hands. That act is filled with so much despair. You can't help but put a super in front of it. It's like super, 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 super despair. No, more than that. Super, 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 super despair. It just feels so good. What the hell is wrong with you? And my sister, too. In that moment of death, I think she must have felt that despair. After all, to be murdered by your own sister, and only as an example to someone else. She must have died feeling such excruciating hopelessness. I'm so jealous of her. Super jealous. I knew you couldn't be just some ordinary person. You're some kind of abnormality. Turning your own despair into some kind of fetish. Abnormality doesn't even begin to describe it. Like, Genocide Jill is crazy for sure, but this is a whole nother level of nuts. You're saying I don't compare to some lowly beast that can only kill the weak, right? So, I'm hopelessly attractive, hopelessly brilliant, hopelessly athletic. I'm the hopelessly perfect ultimate human. No, I don't think there's anything perfect about anything you just said. Yeah, Master's way more perfect, because on top of everything else, he's got that noble blood. Hmm. Don't you mean, had that noble blood? What did you just say? What do you mean by that? <laughs> you still haven't figured that part out yet? Man, you guys are so slow! You haven't even solved all the mysteries, and yet here you are, yap, yap, yapping away! 
Are you talking about our memories? You've already solved this mystery, right? I'm the killer! So how about the next one? Maybe you should solve the riddle of your missing memories! Then you can start floating! Damn straight! That's exactly what we're going to do! We're going to solve all these mysteries! And then... We'll have our victory! <laughs> I can't wait! All right, then let's just get straight to the point. What memories did you steal from us? When the group pictures were taken, and those interviews, it must mean... My God! It must have something to do with our entrance day exams. Don't care! At least give us a hint! Your brains are like sponges, all drippy and leaky. I already gave you a hint before. All the memories you lost share something in common with a few other things. Do you recall? You're talking about the motives you provided to try and get us to kill each other, right? So you do remember after all. Well, I would hope you wouldn't forget something so important. It was stupid of me to even ask. I apologize from the bottom of my heart for my bad manners. So then, let me ask you another question. Did you notice that each motive I presented you had a specific theme to it? A theme? Yep, you got it. So that's my question to you all. When Sayaka was murdered, what was the theme of the motive I presented? I got it! The driving force behind the motive you presented us with at that point was human connections. Ding, ding, ding. You got it. Remember those DVDs I gave you guys? Each video showed the total destruction of your most important relationships. For example, your family. For example, your friends. I ruined all those relationships and showed you the results. It was to motivate your desire to escape and kickstart your urge to kill. But still, what a cruel thing to do. You're the one that did it! Yes, well, I'm perfectly happy to accept your disapproval. Okay! Time for the next question! Um, so... What was the theme for the second motive? I got it! It was... our past, right? Yay! Makoto got it right again! That time, the theme was... Embarrassing! And the whole reason Mondo did what he did was to protect his secret. So, how long do you plan on dragging this out? Relax, relax. Okay, on to the next question. So, what was the motive for the third murder? I got it! It was money, wasn't it? Greed. Seek and destroy! Hell yeah, you got it again! Goddamn straight it was money! Celeste killed Hifumi and Taka for a little personal gain. Her greed led to all kinds of death and destruction! What's the point of all this? 
Why are you making us go through this case by case? <laughs> Don't worry, sweet cheeks. Just one more to go. Now, can you tell me the motive behind crazy ass Sakura's crazy ass death? It was betrayal. Precisely. You see... Once I revealed Sakura's betrayal, that led to everything that came afterwards. Anyway, it looks like you answered all of my questions correctly. How painfully delightful. But what's the point? What meaning is there in asking those questions now? Relationships? Secrets? Money? Betrayal? These are all pretty standard motives, right? The most normal of normal. Totally middle of the road. But of course, those aren't the only motives that exist in this world. In fact, there are as many reasons to kill as there are people on Earth. They compel humans to kill each other, bringing despair to the world. This is what we refer to as the Seed of Despair. Seed of Despair? Just as water, air, and food promote growth in living things, the Seed of Despair also needs nourishment. And that nourishment is hope. Despair can grow only in the presence of hope. Two sides of the same coin, divided by a razor-thin line. Such is hope and despair. How much longer is this stupid speech of yours? Weren't we discussing our missing memories? Why are you trying to change the subject? If you would listen, you would see I'm not changing the subject. We are discussing your memories. What I'm trying to say is, the seed of despair is closely tied to your own memories. How so? You see, by taking away your memories, I gave you hope. Of course that hope merely existed to be consumed by despair. How could taking away someone's memories give them hope? And plus, you haven't given us any hope anyway! Is that so? All you've been able to think about during your time here is how to escape, right? The mere fact that that's what you want proves I gave you hope. What are you talking about? If none of you wanted to escape this school, the killings never would have taken place. That is why we took your memories, so that you would have the desire to leave. The only reason we want to leave is because you took our memories. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Correct, Mundo! Which means if we did have our memories, then we wouldn't want to leave. Do I understand that right? What? Why the hell would having our memories make us not want to leave? <laughs> A most troubling thought. Isn't it? But it's not enough. I want more distress, more despair. I put so much effort into creating hope in order to feed your despair and make it grow. So, just like Crazy Eddie slashing his prices and passing the savings on to you, let me give you a hint. Huh? Really? Then hurry up and tell us! Okie dokie! Like they say, seeing is believing! I'd like for you to see the outside world! You mean the world beyond the school walls? So something really did happen out there. Now are you interested in what I have to say? You wanna see what's out there? <laughs> I wanna see too. 
see your faces sink into despair. <laughs> now then, open sesame! Behold! The world beyond the school wall! This is the outside world you've all been so anxious to claw your way back into. Dangerous. The world has grown so very dangerous. That's what this means. What are you talking about? None of this makes any sense! What? What am I looking at? This is a scene from a movie or something, right? What you just saw, all of you should recognize it. That world is locked away within the memories that were taken from you. If you can't remember, please just try. Do your best to try and recall. <laughs> Better kick your brain in the ass! Cause it's up to that gray lump whether you live or die! I don't remember! Ain't a fucking excuse no more! Cause now it's time! For the final class! Remember or die! What the fuck happened outside? You want us to remember or whatever, but when it comes to that crazy, confusing video you showed us, I don't understand a damn thing! What's the meaning of the footage we saw? Is this another one of your practical jokes? I mean, you're telling us to remember, but what am I supposed to be remembering? Nobody can remember anything. No, it's wrong. Actually, she might remember. Who might remember? The other token. Genocide Jack. Huh? The two of them share certain kinds of knowledge. But their memories aren't linked, right? I see. If their memories are separate, then even if one personality is forgotten, there's a chance the other may still have those memories. What do you say, Toko? Are you telling me to swap places with her? No! Absolutely not! That'd be like forfeiting my entire identity! Toko, you're the only one we can rely on now. It's me, your friendly neighborhood serial killer! Boy, she just gave in like it was nothing. I'm going to ask you a question, and I want to have it answered immediately. Do you know anything about this video? Huh? What video? The video that's playing right now. Who the hell are you? Oh. I'm the mastermind. Oh, nice to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you too. That's enough. Just look at the stupid screen. Aye, aye, Roger. You got it, Captain. Well. Does it look familiar? I don't have all the details, but... Of course it does! Then you remember...
remember all the stuff it's showing? Of course I do! So you didn't lose your memory after all. Then why didn't you say something earlier? I only answer questions when someone bothers to ask me. I'm the quiet type, you know? Oh my god, she's the worst liar in the world. More importantly, if you really do remember, what is it? Huh? What's the matter, Master? Do you really not remember the tragedy? The tragedy? Oh no! You seriously forgot? Maybe I can help you remember with a kiss. Just answer the question. What happened out there? Well, I can't really say if it happened or if it's still happening. But it was the biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history. Why is that phrase coming up now? Because it's all because of that event! What is? Are you serious? I'm talking about the way the world is now! Is... now? The world's been destroyed, get it? Destroyed? Explain yourself! Tell us everything you know! Copy that, darling! Okay, so this big, awful, tragic event, they started just calling it the tragedy, happened about a year ago. It was so big and so bad that even this murderous fiend went pale at the sight of it. I guess you could say what happened was man-made. But it was more on the level of a worldwide natural disaster. Either way, there's no doubt that it was the biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history! And as a result, in basically no time flat! The world turned out the way it did, and that's that. That's all there is to it? Come on! There wasn't a single concrete description in there! Well, it just so happens I don't know any of the specifics! Miss Marosa, it all play out in real time, so why don't you ask her? We already did, and she didn't know anything. That's why we're asking you. Oh, I couldn't live up to Master's expectations! To die! To die! This is the true tragedy! Okay, okay, that's enough of your little lover's quarrel. Whatever happened, it doesn't matter at this exact point in time, right? The end justifies the means. Everything serves the outcome. In other words, the world has ended. That's the important thing. Uh, how can the world just end? It's... it's the world! Calm down. It's okay. There is no need to panic. Every living person will be dead in a hundred years anyway. So the world ending isn't that big a deal. Oh, come on. Now you're just being ridiculous. Well, as long as we're being ridiculous, I have another ridiculous story to tell you. It's the story of the Tagami Corporation, which has given Byakuya's life all its meaning. What? What did you say? I'm glad to see you took the bait. You bit into it like a middle-aged secretary at an all-you-can-eat cake buffet. Hey, hey! So, what do you think happened to the Togami family? Correct! Well done, peasant! But, I didn't say anything yet. I just got so fucking bored waiting, I couldn't help it! Even if you're wrong, eventually you'll figure it out, right? <laughs> Till then, you're just going in circles. No matter what you pick, you get the right answer! Pretty innovative, don't you think? But, do you think it might be a disease? Getting bored so easy, I mean. Do you think I might be sick? Anyway, like I was saying, Byakuya's entire lineage has been totally annihilated! What? What the hell are you talking about? I can confirm that his entire family has died. Even the distant relatives. The Tagami name has perished. Stop with these idiotic jokes! Stop! And said with such authority! 
A peasant would dare challenge us? The avatar of divine punishment? You must learn your place, peasant. You are no longer the ultimate affluent progeny. They, they couldn't possibly be gone. The Togami family is destined to guide the world. Hell, there is no world anymore, remember? It got fucked a full year ago. Oh, hold on. That doesn't make any sense. What? That don't make sense. There's no way that happened a year ago. I mean, we only came to this school a few weeks ago. If some kind of world-ending event happened a year ago, then how do you explain the totally normal world we were living in up till then? Have you considered the possibility that you're mistaken about that? Mistaken? Well, if I'm understanding you right... It sounds like you think the tragedy happened a year before you arrived here. Well, well yeah. I mean, like he said, we just got here a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago? Ooh, I get it! You're saying that what happened two years ago actually happened more recently, right? Huh? Two years ago? Well, I mean, you guys all started attending Hope's Peak Academy two years ago. <laughs> what the hell is this chick trying to say? I understand why you'd have trouble accepting it, but in the end, you can't deny the truth. And the truth is, everything is cause and effect. Deny that, and you may as well give yourself up to God. So, you must surely understand all the hints I've given you so far, right? What are the memories I took from you? Come now, answer us. Answer with all your heart and soul. How are we supposed to answer? I... I just don't know what's going on anymore. I got it! If we accept that what you say is true, then we've all lost our memories of the last two years after coming to this school. Nope, nope, no, 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 nope, no. I mean, no matter what anyone says, uh-uh. Another correct answer. Well done, peasant. Seriously? This routine again? We've lost two years worth of memories? That's right. You've already spent two full years here at Hope's Peak Academy. And that entire period of time is precisely what you've forgotten. I don't remember the last two years of my life. That... that's not possible! like that. We've been living here for two years? Hell no! That's impossible! I mean, I haven't gone to any awesome school events or anything! Heck, I've never even gone to a single class! No, it's wrong! Hero, there's something I'd like you to take a look at. This notebook right here. Huh? Hey, why is my name written on it? 
I found it in the locker room on the second floor. If you don't mind, could you take a look inside? Sure, whatever you want. But I've never seen this notebook before in my life. Wizza, wizza, is something wrong? It's kind of similar. No, even more than that. This is absolutely my handwriting, without a doubt! But how is this... I don't remember ever writing in this thing! No! No way! It looks like you actually did attend class here at Hope's Peak. But somehow, you forgot all about it. Lies! It's all one big lie! I don't want to believe it either. But there's also no explanation for this pocketbook. And whose pocketbook is that? It's mine. And the handwriting inside is also mine. There's no doubt about it. But just like Hero, I have no memory of ever writing in it. And the reason for that is the two years of missing memories? <laughs> After seeing all the evidence, do you have any choice but to acknowledge the truth? It's just so desperately dark. The mystery solved, but it's like a goddamn funeral in here. Shit, man! I've never been to a funeral. Hell yes! Two years of school life. How many moments of blossoming youth have you missed out on? How many fun classes? How many school events? This was your chance to build lasting friendships, right? And on top of that, something tragically sad happened one year ago. The biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history. Right before everyone's eyes, the world came crashing down. You absorbed all that despair, but then you forgot it all. And once you'd forgotten, you made the choice to subject yourself to this killing game. Oh. And there's one other thing. To be even more precise, the memories you all lost were... Actually, never mind. I'm bored. Explaining stuff is boring. What? We are bored of this world. Everyone always talks big, declaring all the great things they'll do. But then they always fizzle out. This world is just so desperately fucking boring! What are you talking about? In a way, I'm jealous of all of you. To give yourself over so completely to such stimulating despair? Yeah, so figure out the rest for yourselves! I'm sick of expositioning all this shit! Figure out what? Figure out where your memories come apart. That's at the heart of all of this. any time other than that day. When I first came to the gates of this school and stepped foot in the main hall. When I passed out, I was overcome with a strange sensation. Out. I woke up in a classroom with my head on the desk. I assume not much time had passed since I'd collapsed in the main hall. <laughs> but instead, two whole years had gone by! The reason it felt so short was because... Our memories of the time in between had been completely removed? You got it, honey! Two years of memories? Poof! Gone! Which means a 
course. When everyone met for the first time, it wasn't actually for the first time. Unaware of this fact, you took the time to introduce yourselves to each other, but... But by that point, we'd already spent two years together at the school. That's what those photos reveal, isn't it? <laughs> yep, that's what they reveal! You were all such close friends! You spent two years together, and then you started killing each other! And it was all so you could escape into a world that's already been annihilated! <laughs> what a terribly tragic tale! Even if you left now, there's nothing you could do to fix it! You're the one who set things up to be like this! I love you all so much. What? Once your school life here began, I thought about you constantly. It's only natural that I would fall in love. So, since I love you guys so much, I'll tell you all about it! All about the idea we came up with as the ultimate despair! Our plan to bring despair to all mankind! Let's go back in time, two years, okay? Back to when everyone first came to this school. School life during that first year overflowed with hope and happiness. Oh boy, it was just the worst! Everyone was enjoying themselves so much! You were all having the time of your lives! But that couldn't last forever, of course. The peacefulness only made it through that first year. Because after that, an event unfolded that hammered a soul-crushing despair into all of humanity. The biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history. The tragedy. All too soon, the world's days of peace came to a bloody end. And as you can imagine, the school was no exception. The tragedy even made its way here leading to the extermination of most of the students. What... are you? Hmm? What do you mean? The most tragic event in human history, and the ultimate despair that caused it. I can't believe it's all because of just you and Mukuro. Was it some kind of organization? An angry mob? An incredibly motivated family? You have a point. If I had to describe it, I'd say... It was none of those. How can I put it? It was more of an ideological thing. Despair is contagious, you know. It's almost like a natural phenomenon. Everyone is capable of it. And now the entire world has fallen into despair. In other words, if you see despair as the enemy, then your enemy is the world itself. I just don't understand why. We didn't ask you to try to understand. This was a tangent anyway, unrelated to the matter at hand. Okay, so let's get back to the story. Hope's Peak had taken so much damage. You guys were the only survivors. The members of the 78th class of Hope's Peak Academy were the only ones left. And then, something super neat happened! Now pay attention, cause this is important, and I'm only gonna say it once! So guess what? To protect everyone who had survived, Hope's Peak was transformed into a shelter! That's right! It was transformed into a shelter! Ah, I said it twice! Now, someone was responsible for that transformation, for creating what would eventually become your prison. Do any of you know who that might have been? I got it! It could only have been... the Headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy! 
He wanted to turn the school into a shelter to try and protect us. To protect us from the despair and tragedy taking place outside. That's why he asked us to make that promise. To say that we were willing to live in this school forever. We believe he had something like that in mind, yes. If you, the collective hope of a new generation, could survive, maybe the world could have a fresh start. Yeah, the headmaster put that much faith in you. And because we had that same hope, that's why we all agreed to live here forever. But creating the shelter was also his single biggest mistake. <laughs> it's laughable, really. He was the headmaster, but he had no idea. He had no idea that we, the ultimate despair, had already made our way into the school. So what was supposed to be a shelter to keep you safe became a cage that made it impossible for you to escape despair. <laughs> I have to say, it really helped me out a lot. It saved me a ton of time. By the way, it was you yourselves who blocked off the windows, the doors, all the exits. Under the headmaster's direction, you all went about your work like obedient little sheep. You mean, we trapped ourselves in here? And then you forgot all about it and started bitching about how you were trapped in here. Once you'd finished building your little shelter, it was time for me and Mukuro to get to work. And thus began the killing game. Me and Mukuro have come here, spending the last two years waiting for that moment. That moment where you all began killing each other served as the climax of our global despair plan. And the only reason you survived the tragedy was so that you could be a part of it. You only let us live? So we could go around killing each other? Is that- Why? Why would you do that? Because this was so much more than a simple high school death match. Rather, it was a method to hunt down and destroy every last remaining speck of hope in the world. What are you saying? Well, it would seem that there's a little bit left out there. A few souls unwilling to give up hope. So I thought I should show them, which is why I... <laughs> well, why don't you tell me? about you hijacking the airwaves, aren't you? Uh-huh. That's exactly what I'm talking about. To show the world the murders taking place at this school, which was meant to be a symbol of hope. That was the whole point of the ultimate despair! When I said climax, that was what I was talking about! The world watched as you fell into despair and began to kill each other one after another. Despair is as contagious as any disease. Any hope left turns to despair. <laughs> Isn't the power of television just amazing? By the way, since we started broadcasting, a whole bunch of people have tried to come and rescue you. Uh, are you serious? But utilizing the heavy weaponry I installed around the school grounds, I had no problem expelling them. Expelled them? I have to thank you all. They were a relentless bunch, refusing to give up on hope and trying to force their beliefs on the world. But in the end, I was able to give them the final despair. Death. So here 
just used us to bring despair to everyone in the outside world? Well, sure, but I also gave you a second chance at life, right? So it's like, give and take. Give and take? You're so full of shit! And there's a reason I chose you guys to survive when all the other students were dropping like flies. I mean, we built up two years of memories together. You were all my treasured classmates. Sorry, that's a lie. I just figured you'd despair even more when you found out a friend had betrayed you. And that's the truth, which is what you wanted, right? So, does it make you feel utterly lost and hopeless? You solved the mystery, but despair at the truth, right? Don't tell me. Did you seriously count on the possibility that we would solve your mystery? And if we did, then what? Our final desire for creating this world of despair was so we could experience one last class trial. If you were bold enough to solve the mystery, only to discover that the truth was utterly hopeless, how would you react? What would you do? See? Discovering the truth doesn't necessarily lead to a sense of hope. Truth can be full of despair, too! Like right fucking now! Not to mention, all those motives I talked about were totally meaningless. I mean, with the world having ended and all. Meaningless? Then we... Murdering each other? For nothing? And think about it. You chose to lock yourselves up here, then started murdering each other to get out. We weren't just random strangers either. We were classmates. We'd spent two years together. <laughs> no, even I can't laugh at that. We get it. We get it, okay? We're totally awesome, right? We get it already! So help us! I'll do anything! Just help me! A peasant begging for his life? Oh, how delightful! We've never witnessed such a travesty firsthand. But I'm sorry to say, begging doesn't work on me. All I want is despair, and there's no reason for it. And since there's no reason, there's no argument against it. There's just no understanding it. No argument, no understanding. What better definition of ultimate despair could there be? Wait, hold on. You've just been going on about whatever you feel like, but... But there's no real reason for us to believe anything you have to say. Huh? You say the world's fallen apart, but I haven't seen it for myself. So I don't acknowledge it. I don't accept it as the truth. Until you see it with your own eyes, truth and falsehood overlap one another. In other words, you're not unlike Schrodinger's cat right now. Is that what you're saying? If so, what then? Are you saying you won't accept the truth? Until you can go outside and see for yourself? Well, you better not! You go out into that world and you're all gunners for sure! Trust me, I'm not lying about any of this! Well, even if it's all true... I refuse to give in! I refuse to lose to you! For the sake of everyone you've killed! Huh? Everyone I've killed? What are you talking about? You're the ones who killed them! I didn't kill anyone. I simply gave you a little nudge in the right direction. And that's all it took for you to start killing each other. You're nothing but bloodthirsty animals. That's why anyone was murdered here, peasant! Say what you want about hope, but we're all creatures of instinct, right? 
Hell yes! <laughs> That's funny as shit! No! This isn't just some game to us! It's murder! Plain and simple! You stole our memories! Invented reasons for us to do it! You pushed us all into a corner! It's all your fault! You certainly have a talent for passing the buck, don't you? That must be your hope, huh? But we don't have much time left to keep up this banter. We have to draw things to a close soon. What do you mean? I'm talking about the vote, of course! You didn't forget about that little rule, did you? Oh, and also, since this will be the last vote, I decided to change the rules! What? You guys so full of hope, and me so full of despair. I've decided to have you vote which one will be punished. If even one of you votes to punish Hope, well then, I'll consider that a win for me and punish everyone on the side of Hope. Even if it's just one person? Oh, but don't worry. I won't be voting, of course. Even if you don't, you've still got the upper hand in all this! It's okay. Nobody would actually vote to kill themselves, right? Oh, let me just mention one more thing. When I win to punish you guys, you'll have to stay here till you grow old and die. No fighting, no killing. That's your punishment. You mean... we just... We'd have to just... live here? She's saying she'll let us live! If you're not happy with that, then go ahead and punish me. And make your way to the outside world. Enter a world fallen from grace, where only despair exists. Where you'd likely be dead within a day. What are you saying? So no matter what, we're doomed! Wait a sec! I just got hit with an inspiration bomb! Dying of old age is boring as shit, right? The audience at home isn't gonna dig that at all! So, here's what'll happen. One of you will get to experience an instant, super impressive punishment! What? You... you can't just... Do you mean to say... you'll execute one of us? And I get to decide... who's gonna have to suck it down! Makoto, you're up! So let me make this clear. Everyone has two choices in front of them. If a single person votes for Hope to be punished, then only Makoto will receive a harsh punishment, and the rest of you will live here in peace. If, on the other hand, you desire to see us punished, then you must all leave this place. I will force you out, ensuring you all die horrible deaths in the outside world. What I'm saying is, if you sacrifice Makoto, the rest of you will get to live out your lives! What? Has your resolve softened? Have you lost confidence? Are you afraid of being punished? Don't you have faith in your friends? N no! That's not it! It's okay. You're right to be afraid. It would seem all of those around you have realized the futility of going against me. Guys? It's so beautiful. Your lovely faces, eroded by despair, have come together as one. Besides, Yoko, you could never betray your father, could you? What? I mean, the Headmaster's only wish was that all of you would survive, right? That's why he tried to trap you all here, after all. The least you can do is try to honor your dead father's wishes. <laughs> Kyoko! One person's despair is enough to seal your fate. Isn't that just the most hopeless outcome ever? So, who do you think Whose despair is gonna sign your death warrant? No 
no one. Nobody's gonna give in to despair. We're not gonna lose to you. So boring. Stubborn till the very end, huh? Well, that's fine. Then let's just hurry up and get it over with. It's time for the final vote. Everything will come to an end. Your stupid hope. And your stupid life! We won't give up! As long as there's hope, we'll never give up! If I were to die... That would be the end of Hope's Peak Academy. <laughs> Don't lose hope now! All my fortune-telling senses are telling me not to leave this place! <laughs> but to live... It's moving forward, right? So even if it's hard, even if we're scared, we don't have any choice, do we? I want to keep on living. I want to open the next door. There must be something new waiting for me! So that's why. That's why. No matter what, I need to get out of here! The whole fortune telling thing doesn't matter anymore. What matters is my own gut feelings. We won't give up! As long as there's hope, we'll never give up! If I were to die, that would be the end. I've decided to have faith in myself. By the way, the air outside is totally polluted, you know. The only reason we're okay in here... ...is thanks to the air purifiers in the physics lab. Don't lose hope now! I've been thinking about all this. And I was thinking, at a time like this, what would Sakura do? You only get stronger by taking adversity by the horns. Confront that thorny path with enthusiasm. That sounds like something she'd say, right? No. I think that's definitely what she'd say. Which is why I... I... Yeah! I've made up my mind! We won't give up! As long as there's hope, we'll never give up! If I were to die, that would be the end. Uh, I just saw By the way, the, the only reason is thanks to the air. Say whatever you want. I've made my decision. If I die, the purifiers will screech to a halt. In other words, as soon as I die, the communal life you've all been living will come to an end. Don't lose hope now! <laughs> I don't care either way! I'm fine with whichever one is more interesting! Actually, I may not look like it, but I always hated school! So, no matter how I look, still hate it! <laughs> oh, but, no matter what, Master has to come along with us! We won't give up! As long as there's hope, we'll never give up! If I were to die, that would be the end. Uh, the By the way, the, the only reason is thanks to the air. Say whatever you want. If I die, in other words, the communal life you've all... I can keep on living! As long as I have my master's love! <laughs> all of you will have to leave. You'll have to go into the world outside, where only death and despair are awaiting. Don't lose hope now! What's the matter? You're not actually trying to encourage me, are you? <laughs> Ridiculous. It never even crossed my mind that I might give in to despair. But don't misunderstand me. I couldn't care in the slightest what happens to you. I just have to keep my word. I swore I would end the life of the Mastermind. Besides, the Togami family isn't dead, because I'm still alive. So until I can restore the Togami family and bring it greater glory than it's ever known... 
We won't give up. As long as there's hope, we'll never give up. If I were to die, that would be the end. Uh, the sun. By the way, the, the only reason is thanks to the S. Say whatever you want. If I die, in other words, yeah, the communal know. life you've all. I can keep on living. All of you will have to. You'll have to go into the world outside. I already said I would claim the mastermind's life by whatever means necessary. So, what are you gonna do? Will you just die? Is that what you want? Don't lose hope now! I didn't really know my father, so I can't pretend to know what he was thinking. But even if we're just connected by blood, there's one thing I am sure of. He would never want us to abandon Makoto and choose to stay here. I can't explain why exactly. But if I'm sure of anything, I'm sure of that. Just because we don't actually know anything, does that mean we can't understand? Could it be that... No, never mind. So, Makoto. I don't think you wound up at this school because you had good luck or bad luck. I think you came here for a different reason entirely. You came here to bring down the ultimate despair. You came here to confront despair without ever giving up. And if that's true, I think we could call you the ultimate hope. What do you think? What the... What the hell are you?! Cool. Your stupid faces! The stupid things you've said! The stupid way you all treat each other! It's all so uncool! So unhip! Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up! Lame, 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 lame! To Tim Hope keeps on going. I refuse to give up. I refuse to get bored. I refuse to throw it all away. I refuse to despair. Because all I have going for me is the desire to keep moving forward. What's going on? What's happening? like we've reached the end. I think it may be time to vote. We just gotta pull the lever, right? Good! I'm ready to go! <laughs> Let's put an end to these trials. Put an end to the killing. With our own hands. Well, that's 
just... totally the best! So this is despair. And now I... true despair. And now I... Anyway... <laughs> totally the best! Not possible. Don't make me repeat myself. Okay. Hey. However. <clears throat> uh, no, no, no. There's one last thing. It's fine. <laughs> it can't be. <laughs> stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it! How many times do I have to tell you? <laughs> Get in my way! <laughs> so this is how the despair of death feels. <sighs> it's so wonderful! Even a tenth of this despair. Even a hundredth. I want every last soul on this planet to taste such despair. I want the entire world to die with that despair in its mouth. Okay, let's do this. I've reserved an extra special punishment for last. Let's give it everything we've got. It's punishment time! <laughs> <laughs>
Hey. Makoto. Indeed. If, on the other hand, you desire to see us punished, then you must all leave this place. I will force you out, ensuring you all die horrible deaths in the outside world. In other words... But... It's true. <laughs> yes. Uh, um... enough anyway but <sighs> for serious In other words... Am I wrong? You got it!
Makoto. This is goodbye. And goodbye to Sakura. But hey, if we gotta say goodbye, we may as well do it with a smile on our face. Hey guys! You guys want your fortunes told anywhere, anytime. You just let me know. I'll be there. You know how much I hate being annoyed. But if something does come up, you may as well let me know. I can't guarantee I'll actually bother listening, but, you know. I don't know why, but I have a burning desire to start writing. I might be able to pull it off. A story about Master and me, and the others, I guess. I can't say I'm sorry about what happened, but still, it does feel kind of strange. I really don't know what to say. I guess we graduated? Let's 
Interesting. Things are getting very interesting indeed. <laughs> like I said at the beginning, I'm not a teddy bear. I am Monokuma. And I am your... I am this school's... Headmaster. <laughs> 